five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight testing testing one two three one two three four five six seven eight nine tench are you doing a silly voice there david just to check uh, <laughs> very funny <coughs> very very funny good so no were you because it sounded like you were doing a silly voice you, you're like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten uh, that's um that's just stress of of a long of a long journey home Welcome to Fraculous, a technology podcast for humans. Episode 330. Notification hell, iPhone tennis, and all the stations. All of them. All the stations. All of them. Hello. Is this it? Are we, we on? Are. are we back? <laughs> Have we started? <laughs> I guess We're so. Back. Um, has anyone worked out when the last thing we did actually was? I think it's over a year ago, isn't it? Oh, really? Because we recorded a year ago and then for one reason or another, didn't really do anything with it. And I think we did that more than once. So when did the last episode come out? I can have a look. Welcome uh, to the uh, 2018 edition of Fraculous. <laughs> <laughs> so I posted it to YouTube on... Oh, wow, we all look so young. <laughs> 7th of January 2017. Over wow. 18 months ago. Yeah. So should we say for the record that previously this was video and audio, so you could watch the podcasts on youtube it's gonna be audio only for now because obviously the big stumbling block has been getting the video out so i think we stick with audio and see if that's manageable and then we look at bringing back the video later so that's kind of the plan i have at the moment so i will maintain the video feed and the youtube but it will just have a graphic upon it a still graphic or i mean i guess we could get a bit adventure as if there's a thing we're talking about maybe but i'd know i don't know where more work cycles. Yeah, that's then going to eat into the production time. So I'm just going to purely just do audio for now and see if we can keep that up regularly. And then we can then look at bringing back video as and when. That's the plan. Good plan. So what's changed? 18 months is a long time in uh, anyone's book. I noticed we'd all been in Germany recently. What? Yeah, I was in Germany. I was in Berlin. You were in Berlin, and David was in Cologne. What? You're yeah. in Co- what? Why? Why were you all there? Well, I was there for IFA, the Consumer Electronics Show, covering Philips. So I was working with Philips, doing some video for them. David, why were you in Cologne? I was in Cologne last week, as we're recording this, for an event called Photokina, which is every two years. It's going annually, though, isn't it? Yes, it is. So in the past, it's been every two years because it's such a mammoth event. And also, I think when it comes to product release cycles for cameras and things like that, two years, I don't know. But anyway, it's going annually from 2019 and it's changing its time of year to May. Oh, really? I didn't realise it was actually changing time of year as well. Yeah, it is. It is. I've got the dates written down um, because I was there with Canon this time. And I was uh, making some video. Well, actually, no, I wasn't making videos. I was doing live streaming, uh, interviewing some of the ambassadors that Canon had along to its big booth. It's less booth, more village, I guess. And uh, getting hands on with some of its new cameras as well. Uh, I had a really good time, I have to say. I, I'm like a pig in muck around cameras and stuff. And, you know, Canon's got quite a bit of that going on. So, uh, yeah, very happy. And I was in Berlin two weeks ago, just for a couple of guess. just for InnoTrans, which is the the railway show that happens every two years. But I was there as a guest oh, wow. with Siemens. Siemens invited me out. So thanks Siemens for paying for my ticket, and I uh, should be making a, a feature length video for them. Well, it's it's in the edit phase now. So was that where you saw the the Glasgow subway train? The embarrassing thing about that is that I was out there to, to cover things for Siemens, and the, and the and the sub and the new Glasgow train is made not by Siemens; it's made by oh, someone right. else. Almost a little bit more excited about that than I was for the <laughs> Siemens stuff. So I'll have to be like, no, I'm really excited about the Siemens stuff. No, I am, but then I uh, I was also excited about the new the new Glasgow train. But also, but Berlin, man, Berlin's nice, you know. It is nice. I've been there a couple of times. Yeah, it's really it's got a really good public um public transport system it's really easy to get around it's quite chilled out yeah it's like a chilled out city like if i could speak yeah. german I, I, you know i'd moved I'd, I'd consider moving to berlin but i feel as though nice is probably the wrong the wrong word for berlin it's 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 edgy but in a friendly kind of way you know i, I it does have that that feel as i don't know a bit camden like but without some of the undesirable stuff going on. Would, would it be too strong a superlative to say brilliant? It's a brilliant city. I think that would be a, a thing. It's a really... Yeah. Yeah. 
Last time I was in Berlin, Jeff, I believe I sent you a picture of my experience of the underground. David just randomly sends me Insta messages and DMs of, of sort of metro maps and signs from around the world. It's like, you should do it more, David. I, I, it's, it's too, then, it's too infrequent. You need to do it more. The thing is, Jeff, for David to send you a message, you'd need a notification. And it's becoming increasingly hard to get hold of you these days, Jeff. Haven't we done this before on the podcast? <laughs> we have, but I think it's, I think it's got worse. Well, maybe it's getting worse with age, but it's definitely an anxiety, stress and pressure thing. And and the other day I shouted at my phone across the room like that would do any good. Just because like four people, four independent people all decided to text me within the space of 90 seconds. And I was like, what now? And I was like, because so basically the only thing I have my phone notify me for nowadays, apart from phone calls, which rings, um, is, is iMessage and everything else is turned off and when you say turned off does that include badges as well though? yeah it's all off man so, and do you feel a, a, a compulsion then to open slack or to open twitter and see if anything's there it means that it just when so, just to have constant things nagging going pay attention to me pay attention to me i want to choose when when i when i dive in um i i, I do i give you a brilliant example i haven't we haven't prepped this so you'll be like where's jeff going with this uh I'm not, i don't want to say the name of my bank but what, uh, one of the big name banks who i have a credit card with um there's a bug in their software and they have a little notification thing at the top and there's a little yellow blob that says one and it's been there for the last nine months <laughs> and i keep messaging the, their support team going there's nothing I've clicked on all my statements and all my and there's nothing it's like yeah. and and it won't go away and and every time I, I log in well. to pay my credit card I set and the, and and they call me up and they go oh we're very sorry we don't we don't know why this is happening and it just I just get irked by notifications I I, I, I suffer from messenger. anxiety and this is something that that really gets to me having having yeah bad badges are annoying oh it's just it doesn't, it doesn't annoy me when you can't clear them i think facebook messenger was one where if you didn't allow access to your contacts it would keep showing a notification which made you think you had a message which actually it was it trying to request access to your contacts i guess the good thing is that with ios 12 jeff you do have a little bit more control over your over your notifications and you know with screen time you can you know uh, turn off apps at certain time of the day and so on i think that's great surely you're benefiting from this there you know i you know i'm you're saying that to wind me up because you know i'm i'm refusing to move don't you i'm i'm the refusing and i'm stuck on ios 10 jeff would i ever say anything to wind you up you know me <laughs> there are definitely things in ios 12 that would help and one of them, which I thought was pointless at first, was it's called Deliver Quietly. That sounds great. What's that? When you get the notifications on your lock screen and you see them and they're annoying, you can click on them and you can either turn them off entirely or you can say Deliver Quietly. And what that does is it doesn't light up your phone when a notification comes in. But when you pull down Notification Center, you can see the list of... Oh, that's clever. So it does make sense. And I've, I think I've got that enabled for Instagram because I don't need to see when stuff happens on Instagram, but I want to know that it has happened. I already have uh, about three or four friends slash contacts muted. This is an, a, a little a lesser known feature in iMessage on a phone. I'm sure Android does it as well. But you can specifically mute certain people so that it, n it never notifies you just just from them. You only when you go into a message, then you see it. And I've got one particular friend that messages me. If I send him a message instead of sending one reply, he sends six. <laughs> sort of, he's a, he always has very verbose replies, and so I mute him all the time. Because I don't want to get six notifications, so I just I, I set him to, to mute. So I already do that. That's a nice that's a nice thing you can do. And that's not one of YouTube, by the way. <laughs> Mainly because you never message me. Well, we know we're what? a little bit careful about it. I don't want to get muted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then the Slack thing. I'm sure you could you could make it so that you only got notified when somebody added you in Slack. Well, that's why I have, I have my, so on my all the stations Slack, I only have no, because that was the first one I had to turn off most stuff because that was a very, th that was very busy. And I basically said to, if you added, if you meant, I, I had to change my name on Slack because I was Will originally, but I had to change my name to Will Head because obviously my name is a word. It is, it is the Will Head of the people. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, both of your names are still kind of words. Yeah, but if I if I put them together without a space in, then then that solves that problem. And then I also had I had the word video highlighted. So if you mentioned video, I would get a notification. But there were the two two things I had on all the stations. So apart from that, I don't get notified from that Slack. 
But that does lead me to ask the question. Uh, for, it, it's like playing the game, how many apps does Will have on his phone? How many Slack channels are you in? I, including Frankless, I'm on three. You don't have to name them, but I'm in three. Will, how, how, many, how many are you on? I'm on four. Four? David, yeah, like how many are you in? Two of them are very, very low traffic. I have four in front of me right now. Are you able to, to, to sort of reveal what they are without being too specific, or you, do you wish to reveal them? I have a fractalous one. The, we, we're, we're all in the fractalous one, right? Yeah. We think we can. That, that's that's a given. I have one one for fixation video. Okay. Which is just your video company. I, yes, and I tend to talk to David on that, and we have channels. You two have little chats without me. Well, yeah. For no I, way. Sorry, did, did I not invite you to the fixation video Slack? I should. We've got the all the stations one, and David, Will, and I sometimes have yeah. little chats on that without you. So. <laughs> So my third one is all the stations. So hey, David, David, you and I need to have a Slack that Will that Will's not in. We should call it Dave, Dave Jeff. Dave Jeff Slack. I'll just die and message you, Jeff. Oh, I want to have a Slack. <laughs> oh. And then my fourth one is just for a company which I haven't actually launched yet. Okay. David, what, what are your Slacks you're in? Can you sort of vaguely reveal? Actually, you've you've reminded me, Will. I, there is that there is another one here as well in that case. But yes, there is fixation video. There is... Uh, Fraculous. There is another one for a company that hasn't launched yet. There is that. There are two work ones here as well. One which was for a bunch of freelance journalists, uh, just sharing some tips and stuff, and another more work focused one. Because I found the other day, I was chatting to one of my YouTube friends, and he went, "Oh, there's a YouTube Slack," and he went, "Oh, and there's like a designer Slack," and there's a lot. There's a lot of Slack groups that have been set up. There's a load of Slacks. And it never really occurred to me that there might be sort of publicly of wide ones and yeah. not just closed down ones for your own group. And he showed me and he was in about 20 slacks. And I was like, what? And I was like, how do you get anything done? You know, and my notification palpitation started like, you know, <laughs> bubbling to the <laughs> end. <laughs> when I used to work, um, I was doing some consulting at IBM until a couple of years ago. And Slack was uh, was a big tool there. And there were dozens dozens of different slacks just different interest groups you know i guess it was it'd be used like bulletin boards or whatever used to be used in the olden days so if you had an interest in a thing then join that channel or, or join that slack and if you just you know just do a bit of an internet search for public slack communities and public slack groups and there are loads anything that tickles your fancy you can find a slack group for it if you want to i would genuinely be uncomfortable now being on a slack group with people that i didn't know does that make sense to me it feels like it should only be used amongst a group of friends or or colleagues yeah i'm only on slacks with people that i know yeah currently so anyway i have almost no notifications is that to get back to your original point will and what's the worst that's happened, Jeff, in terms of missing out on things? Has anything bad happened? Because I think that's probably the reason a lot of people, I'm sure, can sympathise, can empathise with the constant notifications and the constant feeling of stress and not knowing who's going to be tapping on your shoulder or your wrist next. But we're afraid to turn those off because we're scared. It's fear of missing out. What have you missed out on as a result of turning it all off? I've never missed a thing. How do you know you've not missed anything? Well, that's not true because we've been slacking you for goodness knows how long and you've missed us. <laughs> well, define, well, I, I don't feel like I've missed out. No, no, I would have... You, you, I, I, Hang on, let me get my thoughts straight. <laughs> you could successfully argue that I've missed out on you guys if I wasn't here doing tonight's podcast. Am I here doing tonight's podcast? Yes, because we ended up communicating. That is true. But we were going to do it last Friday. Or was it Monday? We were going to do it Monday. I couldn't make Monday. Oh, well. <laughs> But I think Will, you, I messaged me to say check Slack, didn't you? And then, and then I did. Yeah, and I said, I, well, actually, what I said was I'll be recording tonight. You went, what? That's way too short notice. And I went check Slack. And then you saw about a week ago we'd had a conversation. I don't feel like I've missed anything really. <laughs> I do, I do, I check it manually most most days. I check all my three Slacks most days. This episode of Fraculous is brought to you by Audible.com, the premier provider of audiobooks. With over 180,000 titles to choose from, humans like to listen to things. If you're a human you're probably listening to this podcast right now. Audiobooks on Audible are read by real live humans, often the same ones that wrote all of the words as well. Not only are you hearing the words written by the human, but you get to experience them exactly as they intended. Humans love listening to other humans. It is one of their favorite things to do, unlike Risk, which is good, because Audible is completely risk-free. If you don't like the sounds or words you're hearing, 
For any reason, you can exchange it for another without asking any questions. To start your free 30 day trial of Audible, which includes a free audiobook download, go to fraculus.com slash audible, so that they know that we sent you and to show your support for the show. Question, because we're talking about iOS uh, and notifications and stuff. Um, in the last 18 months, a few new phones have come out, I guess. Um, what phone are you still on, Jeff? What What are you receiving or not receiving your notifications on now if you're not on iOS 12? Still got my iPhone 6S. Life in the slow lane, buddy. I've still got my 6S as well. Still on iOS 10, and I'm loving it. I ain't moving. And if you want to get me started on the control panel, I, I haven't I done the control panel rant before? I'm not. Yeah. Uh, most yeah. weeks, most weeks, I I wander past my local Apple store and I wander in, and I go in and I have a little play, and I'm like, "Yep, control panels will get out your bleep noise." I'm like, "Yep, control panels still shit," and uh, and it reminds me never to upgrade to iOS 11 or 12. I'd hope with 12 that they would it would bring in a fully customizable control center. And it didn't. So and yet another year of not upgrading. But are you heading towards where I think you're heading about the buttonless phone? Is that where you're going with this, David? Um, not necessarily. The biggest news is I no longer have a BlackBerry. Oh. That's probably the biggest change in 18 months. You loved your BlackBerry. I did love my BlackBerry. You used to sleep with it. <laughs> <laughs> so I now have a 10, iPhone 10 and an iPhone 6S. Why? Well... Well, I've always had a work... Is it weird having to remember to charge two phones? No, that's not weird at all. Because <laughs> I've got them both on wireless charging, so I just put them both down at night now, and that's easy enough to do. But do you carry both with you all, all day? I, well, I mostly carry both with me, but I do have the option of only carrying one. And there, I would say there, are, there have been notable occasions where I haven't been able to get reception on one, and I have, have been able to get reception on the other that has been worth having two phones for that reason. Mm. Yep. And also now, so the 10 is my work phone. I've always had a work number on a separate network to my personal number. And so the advantage of the work phone is I can slim it down to just work apps. Yeah. Whereas my 6S is kind of like still the playground of all the apps. I'm, I'm honestly thinking about getting a second phone. I think sometime next year I'll get a second, I'll get a new phone. And I explain why I'm getting a new phone in a second. And that'll be my new, and that'll be my private number. And that'll just, that I'll just give out to family and close friends. Mm. And then I'll keep my old number as my, you know, I get quite a lot of, I get a lot of press people and, and question, you know, sort of worky people contacting me. So I'll leave my old number for that. But I'll have a, just a new private number, which no one else knows. And one advantage I actually found about having two iPhones is that a lot of the stuff will transfer between the two. So iMessage will transfer over. Well, as in, as in they'll, they'll stay in sync. So basically, I'll, someone will iMessage either phone number and I'll get it on both handsets. Hang on. So, Will, if you've got phone A and phone B, if I iMessage you to your what to me is your phone A number, will it also yeah. appear on your phone B and you could reply from phone B? Both, yeah. and, I, and I won't know whether you're... I, I have no idea which phone you're, you're replying from. Yeah. That's interesting. Ooh, uh, I like that. But the only problem with that is WhatsApp is tied to your phone number. So I have to get people to add my other phone number to the WhatsApp groups, which is slightly annoying. WhatsApp is tied to phone number, no, not an email address, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that one I cannot seamlessly port over, but a lot of stuff seamlessly I can. And I have different notification settings. So on my home phone, <laughs> I only have mail notifications for my VIPs. So you two are VIPs. Yay. So if you email me, you'll get a little badge. Whereas on my work phone, the badge notification will be my work account and my freelance account. Hang on, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 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 Dom, hang on, you can change on the mail app which people you, yes. no, no, I, Will, I'm seeing you tomorrow in person, I can't but help Phil, we're going to have a little notification session yeah, where so maybe you teach me some things about notifications. Can, I think you can still do it, I don't think I did this back on iOS 10, which I think you're on. Yeah, mail app, you can decide whether you want just your VIPs to light up the badge, whether you want specific mail accounts to light up the badge. I didn't know that. Awesome. I always wondered what the point... I, th I know you had like a VIP mailbox. I never realised that yeah. you could then customise it with notifications. Oh, well, that makes much more sense. David, what phone are you on then now? What, where are you on? Well, my, my daily driver is an iPhone X. I, I jumped into that bed very, very soon after they launched last year. 
the old 10 not that you know, neither the of you have got 10. the new 10 since well yes i do actually oh. so uh, just for something i'm writing at the moment i do have a 10s max hilarious name the max the 10s max in gold and is that a unique shaped iphone it's bigger than the the the, the plus and the 10 size wise as the plus is it as big as an, I- an ipad oh, mini print. yet <laughs> Um, No, it's not as big as an iPad mini. (laughs) Um, I mean, there is still a substantial difference between the iPad mini and your, uh, your, you know, your your XS Max, whatever it is. The XS Max, I mean, I used to be a plus size phone user, as you know, and it was... It was fine, you know, you get used to it. But only when I switched down to the iPhone X did I realise how ideal a size the iPhone X is. And, you know, as I said before, the BlackBerry Key 1 actually had the same sort of size and was just a good fit in my hand. So that was my problem with BlackBerry was I almost went for the Priv and then it wasn't quite there. And then there was the Key 1. But then I thought, well, if I'm going to get a bigger phone, I might as well get an iPhone 10 because that's kind of the same size as that. Is is the 10 the same size as the 7 or sorry 8 or the 8 or the 8 plus or is it a different size to the 8 or 8 plus? The 10 is about the same size as a 6s with a battery case on. No 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 it no is. no in terms of screen footprint. Screen is just fills the entire front of it. No but oh, you not how hard a question can this be? The screen, screen size the screen of the 10 is the same size as the plus. It's the plus size, right. But the, the max is then, is then bigger than the plus, yeah. obviously. The, the max footprint is the same as the plus footprint, but the screen fills the entire front. I had them side by side earlier on, uh, the max and a plus. And yeah, that, what you say is spot on, actually. Um, it's huge. And, you know, this is 1,500 quid's worth of phone, which I feel very nervous. I mean, I've... You know, not not the ten was particularly cheap, but I guess because it's larger as well, it just feels a little bit more fragile. And I dropped my Pixel. My my other phone is is still a Pixel. You dropped it. I dropped it yesterday. I was out on a shoot in an airfield uh, in Buckinghamshire yesterday, and it was in my top pocket. And I just bent over to I don't know shoelace or whatever it was, and I oh it fell out my pocket, and um because it landed on a corner, I've got that. I've got that crack across the screen with a little chip in the middle. And was it in a case or was it was it naked? Yeah, it was in an official Google case, um, but that was rubbish. Yeah. Wow. So uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's a thing. But I am due, albeit on loan, to get the new Pixel when it launches next week. New Pixel three. You got the Pixel two, David? Uh, no, I've got, I've got the original Pixel from a couple of years ago now. I have to ask, has that got a button on it? No, there are no buttons. What? Unless you're looking on the side. Many Android phones, I've got, I've actually got about five Android phones here. They don't have buttons anymore. They're all soft buttons, you know, part of the part of the display. There we go. Will's got more than me. And that's where we're heading, isn't it? This one, no button. This one, no button. This one, no button. This one, no button. Last one, no button. Oh, one on my desk, no button. That's six Android phones, no button. So you can understand why Apple has been exploring what it looks like to have no buttons. Will, why do you have six Android phones there? I'm sorry. Um, have you seen a YouTube channel called How to Mobile Photo? Oh, that's why. <laughs> that's why I have six Android phones, because we've been doing a lot of um, phone photography you went a little bit nice to that on us. You went, yeah, yeah, here's all my phones. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they are all, they're all work phones. They are all for a photography project. I've been doing with David, in fact, David and Gordon Lang. Is Lang. that what you talk about on your private Slack channel? We do actually, we do talk. We just, we've just launched a channel on, we don't have our how to mobile photo Slack, but we do have a channel on fixation video where me, David and Gordon. Why don't we have another Slack, Will? It totally deserves another Slack. We should. We should just have a whole new Slack for it. <laughs> um, yeah. So the point is, I'm. I. Uh, yeah. I'm. Oh, I refuse to upgrade, and I really want a phone with a button. And so my worry is, when when the the Max came out and the R, it was like the R. That was the worry. That was the day, yeah. That was the warning flag. It was like, aha! Uh-huh. So even your low end phone is buttonless. 
But, however, 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 however... There is still a hope of an SE. Right, I was going to say, will there always be an SE-style device? Will there be a low, low, low-end style iPhone, which will be sort of more retro with buttons and stuff? Yeah. And I say, if they're going to do an SE, it would be based on the 7-8 form factor, because that's what they did previously with the SE, was based on the 5. On the 5, yeah. So there is a chance, Jeff, that you would have a little bit of leeway with a button phone. But I don't think they'll do it for a while. You know that they're not going to want to cannibalize sales of the, of the ten R. They're, they're obviously yeah. still selling the eight. Are they still selling sevens at the moment, or are they are they scrap those? Yeah, they're still selling sevens, eights. They're not selling tens. You can't buy a ten. You can only buy the new the new ten. What's the new ten called again? The ten X. Ten S. Ten S. Ten S. Do you buy ten S and a ten S Max or a ten R? It's confused. So hang on. So there's one, two, three. Four, so there's seven iPhones out there at the moment. Yes, and the SE, the SE has stopped. Oh, there is no SE. SE's gone now. Goodness. Hey, I bought a new iPad, or rather my mum bought me one. Mm, yes. I left my iPad attached to the front of a uh, oh yes. a uh, cycle hire <laughs> bike, bike in London. Yeah, uh, so I put it on the little, the little bungee strap at the front, and I just walked off and left it there. And obviously when I went back to retrieve it, it had gone. And my mum took a picture of me and bought me a new... She just bought me a new iPad Pro 2 with Apple Pencil, so... Uh... Ah, how have you found the pencil? Well, I went to a class, so my local Apple store again, do a, come on, and you know, we'll teach you how to draw, and you just... Uh... And it's fun, and you and it does... And there's a standard bit of software there that they recommend, and you have fun for an hour playing playing with, with the pencil. And sometimes I just sit on the train and just doodle with my pencil. Uh, it's good. But I, I haven't found a serious application for it yet. I just it's it's right. very much a, a play thing. I mean I've still got an iPad two. Not even an Air two. The second generation iPad. And I can't I can't find a reason to replace it. Because I just don't use it that much. My iPad mini, I've got an iPad mini two, I think it is the first retina one, so it doesn't have touch ID. Um, I thought that was dying a death. I use that all the time. It is uh, in my back pocket quite a lot. Is that because it's the same size as your phone? (laughs) (laughs) No, far from it. Far from it. But uh, I I mean, I use it particularly if I'm, you know, doing interviews or I'm uh, on stage or whatever. It's just what I have instead of a notepad and pen, really. But it was really slowing down and just starting to creak along a bit. And then iOS 12 came along. I jumped on the beta of that and it really started to speed up. And now I'm kind of like full iOS 12. And it it feels as though it's had a completely new lease of life on it. It's been a really, really positive move. I do kind of feel iOS 11 was a stepping stone to get to 12. Like it's, I had huge problems with battery life on my 6S once I put 11 on it. And it was running out. I mean, it was, I think even with the battery case, it was running out before the end of the day. Really? And I was having to live in low power mode and all of that stuff. That's why I've now stuck a one of those very cheap wireless charger adapters on it. And I now just have it sat on a wireless charger on my desk most of the day. Can we talk battery cases for a second? Yeah. And where we all are, because I know... I had a gamble on how long, how long it would be before David said the word Mofi on the podcast. <laughs> Go on, say Mofi. It's your favorite. It's- are you, are you sponsored by Mophie, David? I'm not rocking. I'm not rocking any Mophie anymore. Whoa, 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 phones, whoa! Because my phones, my phones don't need. <laughs> my phones don't need any more battery. Oh, I never thought I'd say that. My phones are fine, and they wireless charge without needing any um, any additional case. The wireless charging thing is a massive game game changer, in terms of just being. If you have wireless charging points around your house. And especially on your desk at work, and you just place your phone upon them, it just tops up, and that's great. There is no kind of. But do you have to place them quite precisely, or can you sort of casually throw your phone down? The one I've got on my desk is kind of laid back at an angle, so unless you, it has to be on that slope. So it's kind of it's pretty easy to put it on there and just charge it. I've got a bedside one which charges my Apple Watch. It charges my phone. And it also charges my AirPods as well. And it comes with a little wireless charging Qi adapter for your AirPods. Which you showed me, but that that won't fit in my watch pocket of my jeans, which is where my AirPods live. 
No, and because it's a kind of sili- silicon, uh, silicon rubbery thing, it's just sticky to get in and out, isn't it? I agree. But let's go back to the 10 and the 10s. So, Jeff, you are so far sticking with the button. Yes. Now, I obviously have both, and I use both on a regular basis. You must get confused. Well, it's actually, it's more like a different phone. So the, the gestures are so different that the only thing I get confused about is Control Center, and Control Center drives me crazy on iOS 12 because it comes from the top right-hand corner. But only on the 10? Well, and now the 10, and the, and the 10 Max, and presumably the 10 yeah. R. Yeah, all of those. And that is the worst place for it to be. I can see why, because you need that swipe up for home, and that feels very natural on the 10. So swiping up for home, totally natural. But the fact that you have to go all the way to that right corner for control center, that's the only thing that trips me up. I do like that there are other gestures, though, on the 10. So... You can swipe left and right to go between apps very quickly. I really love that. So losing the home button, yes, takes a little bit of getting used to, but you do actually gain a lot apart from the placement of control center. You're not convinced, are you, Jeff? No, not on any level. Face ID. Oh, boo. Well, face ID I like apart from when I've got my phone in a gimbal and it's horizontal. And face ID doesn't work in horizontal, I have to tilt the whole thing up, unlock my phone, or basically turn off the locking on it. I must have done my wine about my nighttime experience with Face ID. So the only time I default to my success is when I'm in bed at night, reading a phone until I fall asleep and it hits me on the face. Yeah, me too. And <laughs> the 10 is terrible for that because it senses your eyes are closed and it turns off. So if you have a little micro nap, when you're not quite asleep, the 10 will turn off, whereas the 6 won't. <laughs> <laughs> and also, when you're kind of in that kind of like weird scrunched up position in bed, the face ID doesn't work as well. So I'm very much face ID in the streets and touch ID in the sheets. I, if I'm lying in bed and I want to reach out oh. to my phone in the middle of, of the night, so I've tested this with my friend's phone and, and FaceTime ID, I can do things to my phone with it lying flat, you know, almost horizontal to my head by just stretching my arm out. And on a Face ID phone, you can't do that. You have to pick the phone up. That is stupid. It's really stupid. One password on the 10 with Face ID, even on iOS 11, was a revelation because there's no... You don't even have to press your thumb on it. You just open one one password. It sees your face. It gives you the password. And now in iOS 12, you don't even have to use the share extension to access one password. All of your passwords are now in the apps and in the web, web pages. So hang on. So, so you link one password to your face ID and now you just look at stuff all day long and it just works. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no, no even action. It's like, it's, it's like having an iPhone 1 again when you had no security on your phone. Yeah. <laughs> and you just, pick, you just turn... Like, I remember I only put a passcode on my phone when I had a three-month-old because... She would just get into my phone. Can we, sir, hang on, you've got me peaked. You've peaked my interest. Can we go off on a tangent? And David, obviously yep. you too. I, um, my understanding of 1Password is that it, you can have almost, you know, ter- terribly complicated random passwords for all your apps mm-hmm. and services. And then you only just, you do remember the one fairly complicated one password. Pa- password and it just does it all for you, right? Yeah. And... But what if you say want to change your Amazon password? How do you then? How does Amazon know how to change your the the the, the safe password within one password? So what you do if you're on if you're on a computer and you change your password on that website, the extension goes, "You've just changed a password. Do you want me to update one password for you, or do you want to create a new entry in one password?" I'm not sure. I only ever change passwords on my Mac. I don't know how it works on a phone. But you just said that you use one password on, on your phone, so... Yeah, but I don't change my passwords on my phone. Okay, yeah, I wouldn't change passwords on my phone either. David, do you have a p- password manager? Yes, I too use one password. I feel like we should mention the other password managers. Other password managers are available. Yeah, LastPass is another very, very popular one. And, I mean, they're both very, very good products. Uh, is, it, is it a one-off pay or is it a subscription? You can still buy it as a one-off app. 
you can also subscribe and get access to web-based features. Yeah, so we have one password for families now in our house, and I've been doing my best to um, bring the other member members of the household up to speed. How's that working out, David? It, it's been slow. Um, my wife can see the value of it, um, and it's much better than her having one password for all of her stuff. Um, I, it's just it's just the onboarding, and I don't know if you found this too when you started using a password manager. There is a period of I wouldn't say it's intense pain, but you are having to. The browser extension is great because every time you log into a website with a password, one password will pop up and say, "Oh, it looks like you've entered a password. Shall I save that for you?" Mostly, but yeah, I, nine times out of ten, nine times out of ten. Hang on, but but Google itself in Chrome has got a password manager. Don't give your passwords to Google. Do not. Do never give your passwords to Google. No, the, the the security around the Chrome password manager in particular is, um, well, uh, I, I've been unimpressed with it from, you know, what I've seen. Uh, far better with a dedicated password manager. That works across platforms, that works across operating systems as well. That That's the real benefit of not having it in browser. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of a layer above your Safari or your Chrome or your Firefox passwords. It, it goes across all of those, and that's the good thing. That's the advantage of having a dedicated password manager is you can use it on Mac, you can use it on Windows, you can use it on iPhone, you can use it on Android, across all the different browsers, and it hooks in on various different levels. And I would say their tightest integration currently is a password manager into iOS 12, where it... it behaves like the built-in password management on the device. Anyway, going back to the iPhone XS. So what, are we still on iPhones? <laughs> it's the so it's I, Fraculous, the iPhone advert show. Yeah. So David, would you buy a XS? Would I buy a XS? As a X owner, no, I wouldn't. There's not enough in there. See, I thought that. I thought that. But the camera stuff. So one of my reasons also for buying the XS, the X not the 10s yet, the 10, was that I can actually use it for filming professionally. And I have been doing it. I did that shoot in EFA for Philips. Half of the footage I shot on my 10 in a gimbal. And that matches up with the C100 footage I shot. What? And, it and it, it's, it, it's comparable? Easily, yeah. Gosh. With a good gimbal, the 10 camera is incredible. But then... The thing about the 10s is it's got so much better low light video performance. So what it does, and they undersold this quite a bit, but what I understand it does is it, when you're doing 25 or 30p video, it takes twice those frames and does an HDR effect sort of to get more depth in that footage. So there's that. And also I understand that, so the one problem you'll have if you use a 10 or I think the 8s, and the 7 Plus had optically stabilised lenses. If you use those in a gimbal, you'll occasionally find the optical stabilisation fights with the gimbal. And you get that, sh that shuddering effect. Yes. And I understand that the 10s is less susceptible to that. And when you're shooting on the iPhone uh, in your gimbal, are you using the native iPhone camera app or are you using a third party app? So I'm using the one, the gimbal I have is the Movi um, Cinema Robot, and that has its own app. So I'm using that app to shoot with. I haven't used that. I've seen your gimbal, though, and it looks like an impressive bit of kit. It's a, incredible. Like it, it literally gives you so much control and over the phone. Like It gives you tactile control over the phone, so it has buttons on it for pressing record and start and stop. And all of these effects you can do with it. Yeah. As you know, I've got a DJI Mobile 2, which is okay. Is okay. I've, you know, maybe with uh, the, the benefit of hindsight, I might have gone somewhere else. But it's been it's been a good toy to play with. And some of the features are, are pretty useful. But, you know, some of the Jayoon stuff seems to be pretty useful. And yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued by your movie too. But the other thing I'm interested to see is what the 10R is like and whether... Because that is a hell of a lot cheaper. So here's the thing about the 10R is that obviously one of the big carrots that Apple dangled for the 10 is uh, portrait mode. And it's got two different cameras in the back there and all that clever stuff. Um, with the 10R, 
you don't have two cameras. You've got a single camera, yet you still get portrait mode. Why should you spend that much more money on a 10, 10s, 10s Max or whatever when the 10R is giving you, by the looks of it, and I haven't played with one, pretty much the same output? Does the R stand so for my... reduced or redacted, by the way? What does it stand for? <laughs> so in my, uh, my stack of Android phones that I have here, all six of them, one of them is dual lens and can do a dual lens portrait shallow depth of field effect. The other one is single lens, but also has a portrait effect, but it's AI based. And I've found you can do more with the two lens system when you want to do a shallow depth of field on something which isn't alive and has a face. Whereas the AI based one needs a face before it will enact that portrait. And I don't know whether this applies also to the 10R, but I would imagine it's going to be a similar system. So it's only going to, you're only going to get that portrait of shallow depth of field on a face or a living thing it can recognise and latch onto. I'm showing you a Huawei P20 Pro just here. How it's many cameras has that got? Three lenses. <laughs> well, technically, I think, yeah, it's, it's got three lenses on the back um, and more lenses on the front, technically speaking. A while ago, there was a camera. David, you may have even had it. There was like, someone invented a camera that had like eight, a smartphone-shaped camera that had 18 yes. lenses in the back of it or something, and it, and it yeah. did everything. What was that? It's called the Lightron or Lutron or something like that. It's it's about fifteen hundred quid though. I was very interested until I saw the price, and I was like, mm, got to find out more about it first. Gosh. So yeah, I think just going back to the ten R, I'm really intrigued to see how different the the experience of using the ten R is compared to the ten S. For my purposes, I'd be looking at it for the video and whether that video is better in the gimbal. And I think the dual. I basically go between days where. I, I want the 10s, and then I realize how much it costs. And obviously, I'd, I'd probably have to get a Max because I can't have two phones the same size. That would just—I think that would be too too much. <laughs> there wouldn't be like some visual difference between them. <laughs> so the 10R helps that it's a different size to the 10. If I got the Max, that's even more. Oh, the other thing about the 10 is the it's dual SIM, which would be useful when traveling. What? But, it's got two SIM slots. So it's got an e SIM and a physical SIM. Whoa. But it's apparently it's not as good as the iPad, where the iPad you can sign up for mobile data when you're abroad just through the system app, whereas you'd have to scan a QR code when you land. Yeah, in China it does have two physical slots for SIMs. But also apparently if you buy it through a carrier, then it will be locked, both slots will be locked to the same carrier, which is pointless. But then I discovered that as well as doing the iPhone upgrade program, they also do an iPhone, it's called pay, pay, payment, an iPhone payment plan. So over, I think it's, it's not 18 months. I think it's 20 months, I think over 20 months or some number, you can pay for the phone. And I think the 10R is 40 pounds a month on that for a 256 gig, which is what I would need for the video. And I think the 10s Max, probably the 512 is like 70 and the 256 is 60. Yeah. I mean, you're looking at a cool 1500 quid almost, I think, for the full fat half a terabyte 10s Max, aren't you? But I think the payment plan makes sense in terms of leaves you with that SIM card slot unlocked. And also it's about the same as a subsidized phone. Like £40 is probably, if you think about your contract being around 60 quid a month for something with a decent amount of data, whereas you can get a SIM free for 20 quid a month with loads of data. So it kind of fits in that. But I really need to see what the 10R is like when it comes out. Going back to the other end of the spectrum, Jeff, with your 6S uh, on iOS 10, are you finding that, well, I guess, A, is it slow or how slow is it? And B, are there any apps or anything that you find that you're not able to do now that um you are you being limited i guess but wait you still have all your 32-bit apps don't you yeah well but this is what i was intrigued about will when you said upgrading to 12 was great because it meant that your phone speeded up again from 11 and straight away i'm thinking yes. well why was your phone slowing down no it was, it was battery life it was i didn't notice a massive slowdown in the phone but battery life was because a few months ago i had the battery replacement program done for 25 pounds so i got my new battery i've still got the case and no it's it's behaving well exactly got, as it was so th three years ago 
I got mine replaced for free because I had one of the first successes, which was covered by a battery program, and it hasn't. It didn't really affect that. Like I think the battery health was down to like eighty percent or something. But but David, no, there's no there's no apps have so far insisted I be on eleven or twelve. You'll never guess what the biggest boost in my battery life was on my success. Go on. I turned off automatic app downloads. Why does that chew up power? <laughs> well, for a normal person. Well, yeah. How many apps have you got, Will? For a normal person, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it time to play? How many apps is are, are on your phone? Should we do it? Hang on, I'll get mine up. David, get yours up. Uh, yep, yep. I'm I'm there. I can't remember where, where we were on the last episode. But, Jeff, when we met up, we went to the YouTube place. Did we? Did I take you to YouTube? You did, but it was closed, remember? We had to go and hang out in Google. Oh, that's right. We hung out in Google <laughs> HQ. So you still haven't taken me to the YouTube place. So you've still not been in. I'm sorry. Still not been in. But at that point, if you remember, it was quite pleasing because on my, on my 10, I had 100 apps exactly. And on my 6S, I had 500 exactly. And that was a random check that you'd said, how many apps? Go on, I've got my number yeah. of apps up. So, so David, I think you and I are going to become bottom. Do you want to go first or, or second? Uh, I'll, go, I'll go first. I have a grand total of 252 apps. Wow, I have 109. Well, you've got to be up into the 500s by now. So on my 10S, which is only a year old... And it's my work phone that I keep slimmed down. Your 10S? Sorry, my 10. I haven't got a 10S yet. I'll probably get a 10R, not a 10S. On my 10, only a year old, just the core apps, the very bare essentials for what I need for work, 131. Oh. You genuinely use, in the course of your working week, 131 different apps? Well, I mean, I do, I put stuff on and I try it out and then I take it off. But I do take stuff, apps off my, my 10. On my success, 511. 511. <laughs> We've broken the halfway to a thousand people. Whee! This episode of Fraculous is brought to you by Casper, the company devoted to human sleep. Humans, you are weak. Your frail bodies need to lay down every day for many hours until you are able to function again. To help you address your mortal shortcomings, Casper has engineered the perfect mattress that combines high density memory and premium latex foams to create a sleep surface that contours to your body and keeps you cool and balanced through the night. Casper removes unnecessary humans in the value exchange process and sells direct, so you get a premium mattress at a fraction of the price. Because you are unable to accurately assess risk, Casper will let you sleep on the mattress for 100 nights and if you are not satisfied you can return it, and they will even send a fellow human to retrieve it from you for free. Prices start at $500 for a twin and $950 for a king sized mattress. To get $50 towards any mattress purchase, go to fraculous.com slash Casper and enter the code 50sleep so that they know that we sent you and to show your support for the show. Terms and conditions apply. So, should we talk all the stations? Oh, can I, no, can I just mention something else first? Hang on. Can I, yes. be, can I be slightly pretentious? Oh, yes, you've got, a, you've got a play button, but it's not your play button, is it? It's, it's on my shelf up here. Well, it is, because you technically earned it, but it's not your own channel. Sorry, for the uninitiated here, what's a play button? So, in the world of YouTube and subscribers, David, when you uh, the mile, there are three milestones. Actually, there's a fourth, but only one person, PewDiePie, has ever reached it. There are three milestones: one hundred thousand subscriptions, a million subscriptions, and ten million subscriptions. And you get a silver, a gold, and platinum sort of plaque, which they call a play button. It's it's kind of shiny, and there's a mirror in it, and there's a YouTube logo. Uh, and this is the one for Londonist. So it says presented to Londonist for passing one hundred thousand subscribers. But to be fair, you you did build that channel. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's like that's like eighty thousand all 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 me, yeah. So with your secrets of the underground and. But it's nice. How many YouTube subscribers are you on now? Me personally, I'm on eighty two thousand. Oh wow! I will be there probably sometime early in the new year. That'll be it. Mm. It's a proper milestone. So should we talk all the stations? Talking about YouTube. A little bit, things? yeah. I didn't think you wanted to do trains. What have you been doing, Jeff, in the past eighteen months? We must have. Have we not done a podcast since then? No, we, we literally, the last one, 
Well, there are some we recorded that were never released, but we recorded two before you started all the stations. They will be worth some money one day, those lost recordings will. So we did record Maybe. one and talk, we spoke about it and you never edited it. Is that what happened? We spoke about it before you went on it, but we haven't done a podcast since you started all the stations. Should we, should, we, should we tell people what all the stations is, just in case they're unaware? It was visiting all the stations in the whole country, every single railway station. All of them. 16 weeks with me and my lovely uh, lady, uh, now my wife. Oh, I got married, by the way. Yes, you got married. It was a lovely, it was a lovely wedding. Cheers. Did you, you both came to the, the pub, right? Yes, we did. You were there, I remember. So that happened. And uh, Will, you were, one of my, you were the lead video editor. I was the lead editor. I'm producing a 59-part YouTube series, and that doesn't even include all the sort of the bonus videos and extra yeah. clips we had on the side. Uh, it's been a sort of a, a, a definite success. And we got a book out. <laughs> have you got a book out, Jeff? Yeah. yeah. Which book are we talking about? Uh, so the All the Stations book, not my own personal book, is out. I've pre-ordered it. Yay. I've pre-ordered it. Good man. So, Jeff, let's talk about going around all the stations. Oh, well, just go on to just ask questions then. First of all, how did you film it? Yes. So, right. So we're doing tech stuff. So on my, um, we had a Canon uh, 80D, sort of the, 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 the go-to camera for all YouTube vloggers, as it were. And I'm guessing if I was going to do this, I'd have about six to eight batteries with me, all charged at all times. How many batteries did you have? In your world, Will, but you're the man that has 500 apps on his phone when you only need like 100. So you were the man that said to me, get three batteries. And just to piss you off, I only got two. So And there was only like two days that I actually exhausted the battery. Because if you're yeah. filming that amount of footage, then that's going to be far much for you to edit. And luckily you had at least two charges in case you left one in a hotel room. No, hotel room. no, just the one charger. Did anyone ever have to deliver you a charger? So I left the charge behind one night in my friend's house and he had to meet me en route kind of thing. Bizarrely, a, a, an unknown story, I left it where we in the hotel at the end and we finished in Wick in, uh, in top of Scotland and the nice hotel we stayed in there to celebrate. I left my charger there and they had to, they had to post it back to me. So I, I left my charger behind twice. twice one, w- once was right at the end, which out of 16 weeks, it's, that's not bad. And maybe we should just tell people exactly what the process was. So... You left your house in May? Yeah. And didn't and really sort of go home for about 15 weeks. And what, what were the rules of this, of visiting these stations? Oh, I thought we were going to talk talk tech. Just so people can get... We travelled to all the, every station in Britain by train, me and Vicky. And you got off at every station and you had a cup of tea. No, you just we had to stop had but, but, but pass through. You didn't get out right. at every station. And we made day, basically daily vlog videos, which we turned into sort of sort of around 12 to 15 minute episodes. 75% of those of which were edited by, by your good self uh, and uploaded to YouTube. Sort of th- four videos a week out of, uh, even though we maybe traveled six, five or six days. And it was, it was a summer YouTube smash. And the, but the, yeah, and, and the technicalities of it was, is that uh, we, you know, the logistics of getting that video done People, to begin with, thought that we were editing it ourselves on the train the next day as we were travelling yeah. around. That would have been ridiculous. So we were, we were posting back. Well, in the first week, we were sending back SD cards in the mail um, to, to, to your address and also Dan, our other editor. And in the end, I realised quite quickly that if you stayed in a Premier Inn they, and you, pay, you got free Wi-Fi standard, or you could pay to have their super fast super wi- Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. And you could buy like a monthly pass. So I just paid for the monthly pass. And that turned out to be really good value. And literally, honestly, literally. But it still wasn't that fast. I think you... I, I did a speed test. David would be so proud of me. David, you'd be proud of me. Uh, every time I went to a Premier Inn. It's the first thing you do when you check into a hotel is do a speed test. <laughs> it's the first thing you do is that, is that you run the... What, what's, what's, the what's, what's the app? What's the app called? Speedtest.net. On the Premier Inn free Wi-Fi, you get, you get, like, you get like 50 megabits per second upload and only if you then pay for the super mega it goes to about one megabit per second sorry 10 hang on one gigabit per second upload it's still not that fast when you think i get about 10 gig upload at home on my virgin media i think we need to refactor these numbers jeff yes <laughs> factor of 10 out or something sorry a meg a meg up did i yes. say a gig yes right <laughs> so let me Sorry, at Virgin, at home, I get about 10 meg up, which I think yes, is pretty good. Right. I get about 20. Wow. 
The so most yeah. I ever got out of a Premier Inn fast, you know, paid for fast, was was so what, what's a tenth of, of One, a meg? A hundred, hundred kilobits. Yeah, 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 and yeah, and it's and that still wasn't fast enough. Point one up. Let me get to my point. Yes, point one. My point being is that if we got in late around nine or ten p.m. and you left the file sinking overnight, it sometimes hadn't finished by seven o'clock the next morning. If you got in at five o'clock in the evening and you started sinking, it would get there. So the first thing you had to do was immediately take the SD card out of the camera, which you'd obviously backed up during the day, so it wasn't the only copy of the footage. Like no, no, we'd I'd back it up when we got into that. So you get it, you copy it to my laptop and immediately just put it into Dropbox and start syncing and then put everything on charge. How much footage are we talking about every day that you're having to get back to base, either by, by post or online? I only filled up the 32 gig cards on a couple of days. I don't you ever filled it. You never, you never sent me more than a full card. Yeah, I know, I, that was always my... I thought if I'm sending you a full card, then I've filmed too much. But I, I would do a very, say if we filmed like 200 clips, I would then go through and I would instantly ditch about 10% of the clips because they were bad or terrible or I didn't want them used. And then I'd go through and then I'd sort of do that, like an, an immediate thing. And then I'd do like a quick rough edit. I'd do a rough pass. I'd be like, okay, maybe this one. And then I'd send Will some notes going, use this clip, this clip, this clip, and then maybe yeah. these clips. That did actually speed stuff up a lot. There was only some times where I was like, have you got any more shots? Because I'm struggling for cutaways, but generally that, yeah. When you're on the move all day, like, I know I'm usually really good at cutaways. That's like my, my rule is, is for every sh main shot of, you know, for every shot or something you're doing, it needs a cutaway. So you, yeah. if you're out to get 50 shots, you take 100 because every sh shot has, has, has a B-roll to go with it. But sometimes you just forget, or oh, there's no time. Yeah, because you have to get a train somewhere. Yeah, but it was immense. We totally pulled it off. And if you watch those videos, they're really, they're really slick, man. They're really, they're really good. I'm very, um, we're very proud of it. It is really weird to think that the last podcast that we released, all of this hadn't happened yet. That's su such a journey, literally. <laughs> that chill <your> journey. <laughs> Um, and I wouldn't change that much if we did it again, because we want to go to Ireland next year. Well, if you're interested, I've got two weeks work for you. And the process would be, I wouldn't really refine the process that much. We we pretty much nailed it, I think, in terms Yeah. I mean, it's going to be, I guess, ma mailing the cards back from Ireland is going to take longer. I think from Ireland, we might have to do post rather than mm. rel rely on, on broadband internet. Yeah, they don't have yeah. Premier Inn in... Uh, tell her I think Dublin Airport's got a Premier Inn and that, that's it. <laughs> I've been doing my research. But how long will it take to do Ireland if you, if you, if you, if you were going to do it? Just two weeks, just like, like, like you, you could do it in eight days if you're in a hurry. We thought we'd sort of, we'd do a, like a, a much more relaxed pace, like 11, 12 days, and then factor in a day off, 14 days. It's two weeks. End of Fraculous. If your puny human minds can handle more, then follow on Twitter. At sign, F, R, A, C, K, U, L, O, U, S, or individually. At sign, David McClelland, D, A, V, I, D, M, C, C, L, E, L, L, A, N, D. At sign, Jeff Tech, G, E, O, F, F, T, E, C, H. At sign, Will, Head, W, I, L, L, H, E, A, D. Email your brains to, hello, at sign, fraculous, dot, com. I ain't losing sleep and I ain't counting sheep but it's so funny how we don't talk anymore. David, again, I always feel like you talk to Will or I talk to Will and you and I never talk to each other. Can, <laughs> can we just do 30 seconds where we chat? Jeff, have you still got a book of mine? I think I lent you a book a couple of years ago. A, a That a, TV, TV uh, and media book? Yes, please. I could really do with that back. Do you mind? Yeah, please. all right. When, when, are we, when am I seeing you next? Well, I, I look, here's the thing. Look, Shall I just post it to you? Well, you know David doesn't live in London anymore, Jeff. I, what? I, I Where do you... Hang on. Hang on. Stop. <laughs> what? I've moved out to the sticks. <laughs> you guys really don't speak, do you? No. Have you moved? Have you moved from yeah. that southwest postcode you were in? Yes, I have indeed, yeah. No way! Where I, do you... Are you able to say where you live? Of course I am. Are you in I, London? I no. What? You've moved? <laughs> I did not... I did <laughs> not guys, know this. You guys definitely need a slack. You need a slack. 
No, hang on, hang on, no, hang on. I've got a great idea. Okay, can we do it like um like a like a guess like a guessing game? Like uh, only yes or no answers, right? Okay, ready? Okay, yep. Hang on, I know the answer. Do you live within the Greater London area? Do you live in, in a borough of London? No. Do you live in one of the home counties? No. What? <laughs> Are you still in England? I am still in England, yes. Have you gone home to the Midlands? Yes. Are you willing to disclose to the podcast what town you live in? Of, of course I am. Well, I, I'm not in a town. I'm I'm actually in the middle of nowhere. Are you in Leicestershire? I am in Leicestershire. No I'm way! In the, I'm in a Charnwood forest. I live on the side of a hill in the middle of a forest with no mobile reception. So all this talk of mobile phones is, uh, frankly, fairly pointless. Where fairly did you pointless. move? Move, move during the summer. <laughs> what, what, when I was busy doing train things? Um, that, that was last summer. Oh, what no, this summer. This months, summer. Yes. How did I not know you'd moved? You know what, David? You, you, well, should, you should have let me know on Slack. You never answer my messages. David, what's, what's, your, what's your nearest railway station? <laughs> <laughs> I have several nearest railway stations. I have Loughborough. I have barrow upon soar and Sileby. And, of course, Leicester Station. Are you tired of life, tired of London? <laughs> no, you said. <see, laughs> so, so here's the flip side of that. I am, I'm in London during the weekdays more often than not at the moment. So I've d- the reason I was a bit late was I was I've been in London for this week, so I was uh, driving back. You're not getting I'm, the train. I'm, I'm parking and riding. Have you got your electric car yet, David? This is a whole other episode. That yeah, I've got an electric car on order. I uh, due to be delivered any moment now. What have you got? What have now. you got? What have you ordered? A BMW i3 range extender. Yeah. I drive to Luton Airport Parkway and then catch the train into town and sometimes stay in Luton, sometimes uh, do Airbnbs, sometimes if I'm feeling rich, stay in a hotel or kip on people's beds. Hang on, Will, Will, why didn't you tell me David had moved? I thought you knew. I thought you guys had your slack. <laughs>